Guys, there is so much you can do with a new MacBook Air. Like some super cool new desktop widgets, secret customization settings, secret animations, and even controlling it with only your head. So let me show you the top 10 things you must do for the ultimate MacBook setup. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is customize your MacBook. And thanks to the new Sonoma update, you can get some sweet widgets. It's so simple, all you do is right click on the desktop, tap on edit widgets and the bam, there's a whole new library of widgets to choose from like the battery widget, calendar, clock and a ton more. And all you do is just drag and drop them anywhere onto your desktop, kind of like you would on your phone. And the cool thing is your desktop folders will actually automatically adjust no matter where you try and place the widget. So I decided to add the Spotify widget, a photo widgets, the date, battery, and weather. Basically, these are the widgets I use on a daily basis and things I like to keep an eye on. But I will say my favorite one has got to be photos because if you right click on it, you can actually choose what album of photos you want to display. And if you have an iPhone, all your pictures will already be synced to your Mac. So to remove a widget, you can just right click and remove, then move your custom album into place. Most of these widgets are synced with an iPhone if you have one, so any of the songs you play on Spotify will instantly show on your desktop. So these widgets actually make your MacBook feel more like an iPhone, but I kind of like it. Okay, so we got some awesome widgets, but we can still improve more on the desktop. If you head into system settings, then control center and scroll right to the bottom, you'll see this option automatically hide or show the menu bar. Toggle this on to always because now the menu bar will hide every time you're not using it and it just looks cleaner and creates so much more space on your desktop. Then if you right click on your dock and turn hiding on, it'll do the exact same thing. And so now the top and bottom bars will automatically hide, making your desktop look clean and crisp. Something else you gotta do with a menu bar is add the battery percentage next to the battery icon so you can keep an eye on that 18 hour battery life. I'd also suggest turning on show in menu bar for the keyboard brightness control. As soon as you turn this on, it shows up in the menu bar and under keyboard settings, just make sure you toggle off adjust with low light. Because now you can easily adjust the keyboard's backing light right from the menu bar. It's so quick and easy. And personally, I much prefer this than the MacBook controlling it for me based on the lighting I'm in. But there's still one thing missing and that's a wallpaper, but not just any wallpaper. Onto wallpapers, and here's a cool little Easter egg. The official MacBook Air wallpaper actually says the word Air in it. So cool. But what's cooler is if you head into the wallpaper section, you get these sweet new dynamic wallpapers that have this little icon next to them to let you know whether they're animated or not. Then check this out. The magic happens as soon as you lock your screen. And the amazing thing is that every time you lock or unlock your Mac, yeah. your wallpaper actually changes to where the animation ended. You definitely got to check this out because you get a ton of different options like cityscapes, landscapes, underwater, and planet Earth, bringing a whole new third dimension to your MacBook. But if you're not a fan of any of these, of course, you can just add your own wallpaper to really match with your own unique style and theme. Like for me, I just love a space theme. But also, if you were wondering how to get an animated wallpaper like this, then I suggest you stick around till later. Now, this might just blow your mind because believe it or not, I'm actually controlling my entire MacBook with just my head and facial expressions. To set this up, within system settings under accessibility, you'll see this option called pointer control. Once in here, you'll see head pointer and if you toggle that on, instantly it'll start working. But next to that, if you click the info icon, you can use a shortcut key like F10 to easily activate it. Then once it's on, as soon as you move your head, the mouse pointer moves with you and it's honestly such a cool feature, you just gotta try it out. Back within the settings, you can even add an alternative pointer action, for example, a facial expression to use as a left click. So now anytime I blink, it's a right click or smile, it's a left click. Apple seriously make the best accessibility features and of course, this can be used for multiple different things, but definitely something you guys gotta try out. Now onto folders and there's actually a few customization things you can do to them to match your overall setup. And the first thing is within the folder settings called show view options. Right at the bottom here, you'll then notice you can actually choose a custom color for your folder background. I like to choose something from my wallpaper background just so I got a theme going. But what's even better is you can actually select the picture option, then drag and drop any picture in there and have one of the coolest looking custom folders. Then the second thing you can do is tap on get info for any file and drag and drop 
drop a custom image in to get some cool looking folders going. This has been around for a while, but still such a cool thing to do for a great look. I mean, talk about matching your aesthetic setup. And just a little pro tip, if you search up something inside a folder like top secrets, if you click this little save icon right over here, it'll save all those search results into a folder. Neat. So something you may not know, there's actually quite a few key combinations that can make life so much easier. For example, if you press and hold down the command key, you can click on any of the menu bar icons and actually rearrange them. Or you can drag and drop them out the menu bar to remove them. And if you click and hold on the option key, then tap the day and time, you can actually toggle between do not disturb. Another really nifty key combo is for resizing windows. So usually you resize the corner, then move the window, but if you hold down option and drag the corner, it resizes from the center and once again, just makes life so much easier than having to drag and reposition everything. Another hidden feature is if you tap and hold on the option key while in a folder, this little menu appears, which makes it so much easier navigating between different files. You can also use the command key and drag and drop any type of file into the sidebar like a JPEG or PDF because you never really know when you're going to need quick access to a document. As you guys know, the dock can be filled with a lot of unnecessary apps that you don't always end up using, but there is a really cool new feature in Safari that lets you add your own web apps. So if it's a website you visit often like YouTube, open it up, then tap on file and add to dock. Within seconds, it'll create a web app and add this little icon to your dock so that in future, you can quick and easily access that website. Another amazing Safari feature is if you head into settings under the privacy tab, right here, you can turn on require touch ID for locked tabs. Because now, whenever you use private browsing, if you leave a tab open and someone comes snooping around on your laptop, they'll need your Touch ID to access that private tab. Sneaky. Another quick tip for previewing something is if you tap and force touch on a link, it'll open it up in this cool preview window without you having to actually open up and visit the entire web page. So nifty. But now let's move on to how you can get that animated wallpaper. Now this is so simple and all you gotta do is open up the app store and in the search bar type out i wallpaper. Here's what the application looks like and once you've installed it and opened it up, you will see a whole bunch of different crazy cool animated wallpapers to choose from. I've mentioned it before but I just had to show you guys again because honestly it is so cool and who doesn't love an animated wallpaper? Another really cool app you can find in the App Store is called Hidden Bar. Here's what this application looks like, and once you've installed it and opened it up, you can actually neaten your menu bar even more. All you do is hold down the command button, and then move this arrow and line to wherever you want your menu to collapse to. This is a really simple app, but makes such a big difference. Basically, there are a ton of different ways to customize your MacBook, but there's a couple of ways to unlock some hidden settings. So there's actually one more secret application that not many people know about called Tinker Tool. You can find it on Google and download it directly from their website right over here. But why this application is so cool is because it unlocks a bunch of hidden settings that are actually already on your Mac. Tinker Tool just makes those settings so much easier to find and adjust. And there's literally so many things you can play around with, like the dock, for example. If you toggle on these two settings, now when you hover over the dock, as you can see, it appears almost instantly and in the slow-mo, you can definitely see the difference. The default dock is so much slower when opening up and I personally prefer the faster one. You even get these folder minimize effects where you can change it from genie to suck in and if you hold down the shift key while minimizing a window, you get this crazy cool slow animation and basically it's just a lot of fun to play around with these. If you ever want to go back to your original settings, then you can also reset to pre-tinker tool state. Honestly, you guys need to get this app and tinker with it because you can find a bunch of really little nifty hidden settings. Then onto some maintenance hacks, and did you know if your MagSafe charger cable ever gets damaged or lost, you can actually use a USB-C cable to charge your Mac instead. Of course, just make sure you've got a powerful enough charging brick, but what's even crazier is that you could even charge it with a power bank. Just keep in mind, it might charge a little bit slower than usual. And if you plan on using your Mac for years or one day trading it in, then I'd suggest you keep it as spotless as possible. 
You really don't need anything fancy and in fact you probably already have some of these things in and around your house and you'd be amazed at just what a difference some of these things make. Like I like to use a soft bristle paintbrush to get rid of any dust, crumbs or particles and it's kind of crazy to think just how much dirt actually ends up on the keyboard. I also like to use gentle face wipes to clean the screen and surface of my MacBook because mostly that's what I have around and if it's good enough for your face, I'm sure it's good enough for your Mac. So now that it's clean and you have the ultimate setup, make sure you like and subscribe because the iPhone 15 is dropping soon and you wouldn't want to miss that. Toodles!